Today, we're diving deep into the criminal justice system to examine the immense influence held by one of its most critical players, prosecutors. These individuals wield the power to decide who gets charged with a crime, what those charges will be, and how justice is ultimately served. But with such great power comes significant responsibility, and the decisions prosecutors make can have wide-ranging consequences. Join us as we break down how prosecutorial discretion works and what it means for the fairness of our legal system. Prosecutors are at the core of the criminal justice system, exercising a level of discretion that can alter the course of countless lives. When a crime occurs, it's the prosecutor who determines whether charges will be brought, what those charges should be, and whether a plea deal will be offered. These decisions, often made behind closed doors and based on evidence collected by the police, place prosecutors in a position of profound influence, especially when it comes to the disparities we see in the application of justice across different communities. Consider this. In federal courts, black defendants receive sentences that are, on average, 19% longer than those of white defendants for similar crimes. Research has traced this disparity back to prosecutors who are more than twice as likely to charge black defendants with offenses carrying mandatory minimum sentences. This is just one example of how prosecutorial discretion can contribute to systemic inequities within our criminal justice system. So, who are these powerful figures? In most states, the lead prosecutor in each office is elected, making up a group of about 2,400 individuals across the country. The demographic makeup of this group is striking. 95% are white and 83% are men, according to a 2014 study. This lack of diversity can significantly impact how justice is administered, particularly in communities of color, where those making crucial decisions about charges and sentencing may not reflect the communities they serve. But it's not just about who is making these decisions. It's also about how they're made. Critics argue that prosecutors often use their charging power as a tool to overcharge defendants, coercing them into accepting plea deals. This practice can place immense pressure on individuals, particularly those who are poor and reliant on overburdened public defenders, to plead guilty, even when they might have a viable defense. The courtroom drama we see on TV skews public perception, making many believe that most cases end in trials. In reality, the vast majority of criminal cases are resolved through plea bargains, often made under the looming threat of harsh mandatory minimum sentences. Mandatory minimums are a central weapon in the prosecutor's arsenal. These laws, introduced in the 1980s in response to the crack cocaine epidemic, required judges to impose fixed sentences based on the quantity of drugs involved, regardless of the circumstances. The laws drew a sharp line between crack and powder cocaine, with much harsher penalties for crack, a drug more prevalent in poorer black communities. This disparity led to significant racial imbalances in sentencing, with many black defendants receiving much longer sentences than their white counterparts. Although Congress reduced the disparity from 101 to 18 1 in 2011, the damage was already done. Harsh sentencing laws, along with three strikes laws and truth in sentencing provisions have given prosecutors powerful leverage to induce guilty pleas. The prospect of facing decades in prison if they lose at trial can drive many defendants to accept plea deals, even if it means admitting guilt to crimes they did not commit or believe they should not be fully responsible for. In 2012, the average sentence for a defendant convicted of a federal drug offense at trial was 16 years. For those who accepted a plea deal, it was just over five years. This stark difference illustrates how the system incentivizes guilty pleas, sometimes at the expense of true justice. Beyond the courtroom, the financial burdens imposed by the criminal justice system weigh heavily on defendants. Fines, fees, and other court costs can quickly accumulate, leaving many defendants deeply in debt even after their cases are resolved. This financial strain is particularly harsh for those already struggling, making it even harder for them to rebuild their lives post-sentencing. These costs include everything from fines for the crime itself, 
to fees for confinement, electronic monitoring, and legal proceedings. In some states, defendants are even required to pay for the use of a public defender, the very resource meant to assist those who cannot afford an attorney. And then there's the issue of jury selection. The Sixth Amendment guarantees an impartial jury drawn from the community, but this promise is often undermined by systemic bias. Despite legal protections against race-based discrimination in jury service, prosecutors have historically found ways to exclude black jurors, using pretexts that courts have accepted, even when these excuses are barely disguised. Despite the Supreme Court's 1880 ruling that race-based exclusion from juries was unconstitutional, states found other ways to keep black people off juries. Even after the civil rights movement, these practices persisted, with prosecutors systematically striking black jurors during selection. Although the Supreme Court's 1986 ruling in Batson v. Kentucky sought to address this issue by requiring prosecutors to provide a race-neutral reason for excluding a juror, the ruling has proven difficult to enforce. In recent years, the Supreme Court has overturned decisions in several states where prosecutors systematically excluded black potential jurors using flimsy justifications. However, the practice persists, and many courts continue to accept weak explanations for why black jurors were excluded. So, what does all of this mean? It means that prosecutors hold immense power, and with that power comes the potential for both justice and injustice. The decisions made by prosecutors can shape the lives of defendants, influence the fairness of the legal process, and determine the level of trust that communities have in the criminal justice system. As we've explored today, the role of prosecutors is complex and their influence is far-reaching. From charging decisions to plea deals, from mandatory minimums to jury selection, prosecutors are at the center of a system that can either uphold justice or perpetuate inequality. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the world of prosecutors and their pivotal role in the criminal justice system. If this episode resonated with you, Please share it with others and continue the conversation about how we can strive for a more just and equitable legal system. Until next time, stay informed and always question the processes that shape our society.